fly. Thirty things nobody told you about marriage. If you know these thirty things, it will help you to undo your marriage better. And the first one is, you did not marry an angel. You are married to a human. And humans are born to make mistakes. They are full of errors. So don't expect perfection. Don't expect that your wife, your husband will not offend you. You never marry an angel. Another thing I want you to know about marriage that nobody is talking to you about is love is not enough for marriage. Love is not enough at all. Many of our young ones are getting married based on love. I love him. I love her. He's the only tomato in my pepper. He's the only green grass in my garden. I will love him to ocean dry. You see, that's your feeling of love. Real love is about service and giving. And even at that, love is not enough for the success of any marriage. <laughs> marriage is about forgiveness. Wow. It was Ruth Graham that said, a good marriage is a relationship between two forgivers. If good and enduring, long-lasting marriage is your desire, then forgiveness is a cause you need to take in the school of marriage. You will forgive in the day, you will forgive in the night. <laughs> marriage needs adjustment. You've got to learn to adjust. Your attitude, your character is not casting iron. It's not casting marble. You can change. You can grow. You can develop. A lack of adjustment is one reason that marriage suffers shortly after wedding. <laughs> Destiny of your marriage is in your hands. Look at your hands. Check it again. Destiny of your marriage is in your hands. Whether your marriage will be all right or okay, whether your marriage will be enjoyable, whether your marriage will be, will be cranky and difficult, over to you. You can't blame anybody for the failure of your marriage. You know, people do blame third party. No, I do say third party do not destroy marriage. It's people that invited third party into the marriage that destroyed the marriage. Devil hates your marriage. Devil hates your marriage. Devil hates your marriage. Believe it or not, devil have very deep hatred for marriage because he knows that marriage normally brings order. It's removed disorderliness from the life of a human being. So he wants us to be disorder. He hates marriage. And he will do everything and anything to fight your own. Your spouse will snore. <laughs> and some people have extra grace of snoring. They snore like machine. They snore as if that's where, what they went to university to go and learn. Some people snore in GS. GR1. GR2. Oh, GR3. Ah, GR4. Mm, GR5. They will now raise up their two ends and their legs, and they will now be they sounding like a broken machine or a trailer climbing a hill. They will now be snoring. People close to you can destroy your marriage. I call them vulture. Your friends, your fans, your family members, your siblings, your colleague at work, your co-member in church, they can combine together to destroy your marriage. If they are wrong people, if they are the vulture, that's why you need to be very careful. People you allow to speak into your life in marriage, people you are listening to, you need to be very, very careful. Your spouse will not meet your expectations. No, when we go into marriage, we're expecting somebody that will meet our expectation. No, nobody can meet your expectation. Only God can do that. <laughs> children are money consumers. Before you begin to raise children and you are insisting that you want five, six children, 
please know that children are invaders. Children are consumers. And you are going to serve each child for about 25 years. Plus or minus. You are going to serve each child for about 25 years. You are going to clot. You are going to feed. You are going to shelter. You are going to attend to them medically. So that is why you need to call the number of children you are going to give back to. Family Lifeline. Number 16, your character is your marriage. That reminds me of the book I wrote some years ago. I call it, Your Character is Your Marriage. Go and get that book. You are going to see 50 characters. 50 characters that you must destroy. And 51 characters you must develop if you want to be a successful married man or woman. That your marriage is just a product of your character. Your marriage is just a product of your character. Number 17, if you are not bonding, you are drifting. If you are not bonding, you are drifting. So immediately after your wedding, I told you just now that you will go maybe in the way of drifting or in the way of bonding. And bonding is something you have to do intentionally. You have to do it intentionally. You can't just find yourself bonded and intimate with your wife, with your husband, without effort. Number 18, marriage means living with an imperfect person. Maybe when you wanted to get married, you were living for the perfect partner. You were living with the perfect partner. Bro brother or my sister, you are an imperfect person looking for a perfect person. You can't find one under the planet. Every person is imperfect. So, marriage simply means you are going to live with an imperfect person all your life. What do you supposed to do? Learn how to live with that imperfect person. Learn how to make things work among the two of you. Learn how to celebrate each other despite your weaknesses. You need to learn this so that your marriage can be better. Number 19. Your knowledge will determine the level of your marriage. Your knowledge, what you know, what is in your head, what is under your cap, will determine the level of your marriage. When I see a lot of couples fighting, you will be wondering, why are they fighting? Because they will fight so much, you will think they never love each other. They love each other, and they may be holy, they may be righteous, they may be children of God, but they lack knowledge. You can't behave better than your knowledge. You can be what you don't know seniors you. What you don't know, that is why you need knowledge. Number 20, marriage is not about falling in love, it's about staying in love. Maybe nobody told you this. Everybody told you, you better fall in love. When you find somebody you fall in love with and you can get married. That falling in love is for wedding. The real marriage is about staying in love. It's about staying in love. When you stay in love, then you are married. In fact, somebody defined a wedding as getting hooked to the person you fell in love with. You know, so marriage is falling in love with the person you hook. Can you see now? falling in love, for hooking somebody you fell in love with, that's wedding. And falling in love with the person you hooked, that is marriage. So it's not about falling in love. It's not about staying in that love. Family Lifeline. Number 21, wedding is not enough. You need bonding. Can you see this bonding coming over and over? You need bonding. You need bonding. Men of God, join your hand together on the day of your wedding. But immediately, you know, when they remove their hand, both of you will separate your hand too. That is wedding. Well, wedding is about joining of arms. Bonding is about joining of minds. It's about joining of soul. Joining, joining of ideas. Joining of failure. Joining of success. Joining of challenges. 
journey of miracle, journey of obstacle. Number 22, you need to be intentional about marriage. Do you really want a good marriage, a great marriage? You've got to be intentional. No marriage was by accident. Every great thing is done intentionally. Mothers do breastfeed their baby intentionally. But a lot of time, we expect our marriage to work by accident. You've got to be deliberate about it. You've got to be intentional about it. Number 23, sex is not 24 7 in marriage. Those of you that want to get married because you need sex, you are playing over the bar. Sex happens about two or three times a week in a marriage on the average. So don't think you just want to get married because you want to have sex, you want to make love. You'll be utterly disappointed when you get into the marriage. Number 24, in-laws are part of your extended family. They are not part of your marriage. I think an average African should understand it. Your in-laws are part of your extended family, but they are never part of your marriage. They should not dictate what happens in your marriage. They should not determine what happens in your marriage. So put them where they are, extended family. If you don't allow them to be an extended family, the trouble in your marriage will be so extended, it will shock you. Number 25, marriage is not I, me, my, and myself. I, me, my, and myself. Many people are self-married. Their languages are always being I, me, my, and myself. That's selfishness. That's stinginess. That's self-marriage. That's self-glorification. I think you need to learn about it. That is not what your marriage is supposed to be. Number 26, marriage is not an Olympic game. In Olympic games, we contest. In marriage, we connect. That's marriage. So connect, connect, connect. Your spouse is not your rival. She is not your competitor. Connect, connect and make your marriage better. Don't compete, connect. Number 27, marriage needs acceptance. You see, in marriage, you are going to see what you don't like about your spouse, which you did not see before wedding. You are going to understand it more or later. Who is she, who is he? But the key is acceptance. The key is accept, accept the person you married. Always think in your mind, I married the best. I left the rest. I married the best. I have left the rest. This will give you a lot of energy to go into your marriage and make it a success. Number 28, married means unity. In unity we stand, divided we fall. Stand in unity with your spouse. Build together. Fight your battle together. Win your war together. Serve God together. Run your career together. Battle your war together. Win your victory together. Raise your children together. Stand together in everything. Spirit, soul, and body. Stand together. Number 29. If you can't say, I'm sorry, your marriage will be in a sorry state. Your marriage will be in a sorry state. You need to learn the art of positive apology, not even a plastic one. Apologize with all your heart, your soul, and your spirit, without which you will leave that marriage in a sorry state. So learn the art of apology. And also learn the art of accepting apology without referring to old issue. If you do that, you are going to make your marriage the best. Number 30, no marriage is irreparable in the workshop of God. Wow, I like that. No marriage is irreparable. No marriage is irreparable. No marriage is irreparable in the workshop of God. So take your own marriage to his workshop and it will repair it for you. It will make it better. If you study all these 30 things that we told you, you will discover that they are true, but they are silent. Obey them, walk in them, 
and make your marriage a place to be. Thank you for joining me in this telecast. If you want to watch this video again, go to my YouTube channel at BC Adewale and follow me on LinkedIn, follow me on Instagram, follow me on uh, Twitter at BC Adewale is the name on YouTube and on social media. And visit our blog, bcadewale.com. They will help you so much to build a successful marriage. Remember, your family is very important. Take good care of your marriage. Family Lifeline.